Alright, what's up? What's up? What's up? First time ever on the Soldiers of Shoot YouTube channel. And he doesn't even know it yet, but I'm going there. Cool Truth Volume 1 on Soldiers of Shoot. <laughs> right here, right now, baby. Love it. SOS Cool Truth. Blading for Truth. The one and only Hollywood Edwards. Myself, Daddy Cool AC. Boy, we have a lot to get into. We, we you know, we could talk about the mocks. The mocks. the mocks back. Yes. What about that promo on the uh, uh, Road to Double or Nothing by Cody? Amazing. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We have we have the the ratings of Raw and SmackDown and the uh, the Titanic that is the WWE, mm. and we we had a reemergence, uh, a coming out of hiding. <laughs> Earlier this week on the Soldiers of Shoot YouTube channel. <laughs> the Electric City State, the Steam Town Stunner, <laughs> back from his three-week hiatus at the Playboy Mansion. He survived. He's back. You know, when I think about Bobby, and I want to hear your thoughts about this. Okay. Remember, you remember, you remember American Pie? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, shit brick. What the hell is his name? <laughs> Can't see. Can't wait to see where you're going with this. Oh, do you remember American Pie Two, where he's like doing the the Buddha thing, you know, saving up the uh, the internals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Picture like Bobby for you know, you know, two weeks and and, and six days, you know, <laughs> you know, saving it up, blast off, and he's back. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I I gotta think that's what's going on up there in Scranton, PA, over the past two weeks. He met Stifler's mom and, you know. Yes. Somebody's mom. Added, I don't know. Got it all out of the system. And he's <laughs> Shout out, Bobby. Maybe he bailed Sonny out of jail. <laughs> it came over to care of him after. Well, he does only live about 45 minutes away from where Sonny's being held right now these days. So, <laughs> Conjugal visit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sunny days, Bobby. <laughs> I just, it's funny you say that because I just watched that documentary last night yes the uh the, uh, the screw job the uh, on vice tv they did uh for those of you that don't know on vice tv they've been doing a series of the dark side of the ring is that what they're calling mm -hmm. it yep um, did you watch the von eric one last night i did that <sighs> one i gotta admit was tough to watch that was tough man <laughs> it was tough getting through that um like we all kind of know the story but when you see it you know incident I mean, and, and after the, incident it's like oh you're just looking. You're just looking at uh, what it was. Kevin, right? Yeah. The Wonder Swipe. You're looking at him, and he's thin as a rail. Yes. Um, it's amazing. He looks like he's half dead too. Like, I mean, obviously he's older now. Like, yeah. Who knows? You know. But could you imagine going through life knowing that all four no. of your brothers that you were that close with mm. died in fashion? They all died at the age they all died at. I, I mean, I would. Literally heartbroken for that guy. Yeah, me too. That guy is a spiritual uh, boss. I mean, holy that what he went through. One brother could, you know. You I mean, know, he blow he, your mind, he, and he had to deal with that four, four times. Unbelievable. Probably, uh, and I mean, I guess history would prove was was the strongest of the the five. Yeah. I mean, and to still be there and to be able to talk about it. Oh boy, that I I might literally. Dude, Kevin Von Erich, my heart goes out to you. Yes, absolutely. Like, uh, unbelievable. And the um, the other thing uh, with the screw job, and again, that's another one where we know the whole story. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I found interesting about that was kind of the back and forth with Russo and, and uh, Racket Boy, Cornette there. <laughs> yes. um, um, I mean, I'm not sure who to believe. I mean, I'm sure... I don't like Cornette, so I'd probably take Russo's side. But if you talk to, you know, guys in Virginia that drive trailers, they probably would take Cornette's side. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's probably just what side you would take. I'm, I'm sure there's – I'm sure in some way, shape, or form what Pritchard said about they all kind of came up with it, but they all kind of didn't is probably more accurate. I would, yeah, than I would agree with that. Yeah, I, I could see Cornette – because he is, man. He's like a nerd geek historical Just guy. Just like with the, the all the uh, the magazines. And oh, yeah. Like, yeah. 
I, so. I, I, it could both of it could have happened. Yeah. I mean, he could have suggested it to Vince, and then Russo maybe at the last moment said, "Just screw him." Maybe, you know? maybe, maybe Russo said "screw him," and that that sparked something in Cornette's head where he said, well, "I read about this one yeah. time where yeah. I screwed the guy by doing his move." And who who knows? I mean, listen. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Vince made the call. Yep. Uh, yeah. And indirectly, uh, probably the greatest movie ever made when considering he would become the biggest heel in the history of wrestling coming out of that. And it did a lot for a lot of people's careers. Sure, right. <laughs> Amazing. And, and, and the other side of it of Brett's, uh, lackluster run. I mean, which is probably being nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, terrible. it's just, I mean, if you, if guys out there, Viceland, uh, I never knew Viceland existed until I watched the Macho version. Mm-hmm. They also did one with, uh, on the Bruiser Brody. Uh, that was tremendous, too. Mur- murder scenario. Yeah. Um, another one that's kind of tough to watch, but I knew I knew the story. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of us know the story. But, I, you know, Tony Atlas, I thought, was great on that one. Uh, oh, yeah. gave you a lot of information. So yep. those are pretty cool if you check them out. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, and I guess they got a few more coming. Yeah. Um, but let's get into uh, before we get into the mocks and and and, and the Cody stuff. Uh, let's get. I, I know you did some of this rating stuff with Bobby the other night, but it was after Raw, and Correct. then yeah. SmackDown <laughs> comes in with the dazzling rating of one point eight. Was it one point eight? Was the the official that was the average? Yep, the official yeah, the, the overall. official average was one point eight. Yep, and. <laughs> There's a lot of things that happen that I kind of want to attack here uh, on Raw. Um, I did not watch SmackDown. After Raw ended, I was just so fed up. I had stuff to do on Tuesday. I I mean, I probably could have watched it today. I had a little bit of time, but I was like, why bother? And especially after listening to you talk about it, it's the same show with a few different faces. Yeah, basically. Which you kind of know. And and I... I heard you bring up a few things that I thought were interesting. One is Vince ready to go crazy here and, you know, scrap the whole thing and restart. Is he, is he ready to bring a Russo in? Uh, could he do an NWO angle? It just, you brought up so many ideas and Bobby actually brought up the fact that Brock Lesnar is not going to fight in the UFC. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but mm-hmm. my guess would be that has a lot to do with, tests and things of that nature yeah uh yeah and 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 there's another side of it and it's probably not for this podcast i think there's a monetary side to it with the w or with the ufc going to espn plus streaming the pay-per-views um there's i've been reading and hearing a lot of rumblings about them playing with the numbers to try to not pay fighters the same amount of pay-per-view points which is something i heard randy orton talk about way back when when Vince started the WWE Network, yeah, remember, there Punk were a couple. Was, I think Punk came out and said that too. Oh, well, Punk was another one. That's yeah. one of been one of the reasons why he left. I think. Yeah, yep. So uh, I think the UFC is headed down the same path. Path, and maybe Lesnar's like, you know, f this. Um, a does Vince just scrap what he's doing and go right back to Brock? And B, if he does do that, did he hurt that by what they did opening Mania? Oof, uh, I could see why that would be. Her. See, I, I keep thinking the night after Mania was two point nine million. Now they're down to two point one million for Raw. So if you go back to that, let's just, let's just say, for argument's sake, the eight hundred thousand people that they lost were Brock Lesnar fans. Is it too late? You know, if you just have him come back, walk him in, and take the title back from Seth, are those fans going to come back? I don't no. think so. I, I don't think it'll work. I'm just saying, is this is this a one of his irrational? Mm. This is the way to do this. Then yes, it, it could be. Yep. I, I I'm I mean I'm almost at the point, and I mean, listen, this is just we're two guys talking on microphones right now. Yeah. We're we don't have the pressure of uh, shareholders and you know billionaire deals that are made with Fox. Mm-hmm. But is he just going to ride this out through the summer and say? You'll see what I got coming when we go to Fox. Now, you brought up something to me on Twitter, and, you know, I wasn't arguing with you your point. 
I was just making the point, uh, do you get a little more edgy and do you get a little more Fox like? And then, you know, you brought up a fair point that it's been reported that they wanted a more sporty show. But to, my question would be, why on Fox? Like if they were going to Fox one, OK, maybe I could see it. But you're going to Fo- the Fox network. See, I don't know where the edgy word came from, because all the reports that I read, they wanted it to look like more like a real sport to fit in with the NFL on Fox and the college football on Saturday. Right, and I I agree. Yeah. That's that's what I I'm saying. That's where they should go. I'm oh, not okay. Well, say, absolutely, I, they should. Yeah, <laughs> I'm saying is, do they look at this and you know you kind of have this mysterious thing going on with with Bray Wyatt now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they want you to think this is goofy, but it's actually not going to be goofy. I think you have a creepy kind of psychological deal going maybe i'm reading too much into it no no and maybe i'm giving them too much credit (laughs) well um (laughs) we can always say that right it's always a possibility but but at the same time is like there was a couple expressions he made like he made this creepy expression then he quickly went to a smile and i felt like he did it on purpose Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna oh wait i'm not supposed to be creepy let me smile right now but i I really am creepy you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i don't think that was like Oh, I forgot I'm supposed to smile. I think that's... No, it's definitely... That's him being in character. Right, exactly. Exactly. But let me ask you that, though. It seems like me, Bobby, you just brought it up. It seems like that might be the only positive that people are talking about. People really want to talk about this. Do you think he's going to bl- <laughs> take take any of that and put some of the blame for the ratings on that and just scrap it? Do you think he's going to see this through? Um, it's, I mean, it's hard to say. I hope they do. I mean, I brought this up when I did my solo show last time that I like where they're going with this and I hope they don't scrap it because the ratings, I mean, I, we talk, I talked about the ratings going down on that show and I said, listen, this is the world you're in right now. Your ratings are going down, live with it, but have a plan and stick with it and then come out the other side better because of it. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I hope that's where they're going with it. But at, but by the other token, you d- come on, we know who Vince McMahon is. You don't think part of him is sitting there saying that, well, pal, I put Mr. Burn It Down, the Beast Slayer, in the last segment with the uh, the indie darling, uh, you know, the, the phenomenal guy. I just resigned him, and they get me no ratings, pal. Mm. But... Where, what did you put him in? A, a contract signing, which my friend Jim said to me the other day, if I never see another tr- contract signing in pro wrestling, it'll be too soon. <laughs> I agree. And not not only that, and I brought this up to you through text. Do, do they got to sit there and push their fucking merch? Do I, do, can, you, can it just be a confrontation? Can it just be a back and forth? Do we need to quote our T-shirts every time we sit in the goddamn ring? Listen, I understand it's a business and I understand everybody's trying to make money and I get all that. But I'll tell you this right now. They took what The Rock said and put it on a T-shirt and it sold because he was The Rock. They took what Stone Cold Steve Austin said and they put it on a T-shirt because he's because it's what Stone Cold was saying. It was it was his gimmick. Stone Cold didn't come in the ring and basically say, buy my fucking T-shirt. And that and I'm sorry, that's what Seth and AJ They're doing it and, backwards now. Yes. Yep. And and listen, I, I said it on the Mania Post show. The only thing that rubbed me the wrong way about the Kofi celebration was pushing yes. the merch. It's yep. not the time to be pushing your merch. Yep. And here we go again with the you know, uh never rest, never rust. What, what does that even mean? <laughs> like sh- shut up. <laughs> and then and then it's like I know you are, but what am I? Yeah, yeah. I burn it down. I build it up. When you burn it down, I build it up. You build things up, I burn them down. I know you are, but what am I? Yep, I know exactly. you are, but what am I? Like, come on. It's yeah. not even creative. It's not even good. You're just repeating what the other guy said. Mm-hmm. You know, that? that's like the battle rap that'll get the guy booed off the stage. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's great terrible. comparison. It's terrible. Absolutely. You're, suppo- you're, supposed to, you're supposed to take what the next guy says and 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 throw it back at him in a way that it was like, oh shit, he went there. And then you come back at me, oh shit, I went there. You're not supposed to just repeat what the other guy said. Mm-hmm. Like, like who taught these guys promos? <laughs> oh. AJ, we we listen. 
we all knew this was coming for AJ. Come yes, on. Yes, we did. Like, we knew this back when. We knew this was going to happen to Nakamura. We we knew we called this a long time ago. And then being micromanaged and all this other bullshit. It's it's just it, it's it's coming to a forefront now. There, listen, nobody's getting excited in the WWE world because Seth Rollins and AJ Styles are going to wrestle for a title. Nope. And the reason being is explain to me why they are wrestling each other because AJ won some kind of dopey tournament. Yep. Basically. Yep. It's like what you said. They they just took the New Japan model and compacted it onto one show Mm -hmm. and the number one contender. The problem with that, the New Japan model, like it's Super Juniors, and you know this as well as I do, it's not actually a tournament. It's a round-robin, you know, program that plays out over months that has highs and lows and culminates to the payoff which is the two guys who came out of each bracket by doing the round robin thing. And listen, there's a lot of dopey three ways and four ways and stupid matches. If you watch any of those shows on like the, the World Tag League or the G1 or uh, the Super Juniors, there's like three matches that mean something to the actual overall tournament. And the rest of it's just like we'll put everybody else in a four way. And then, you know, we'll bring Okada and Tanahashi and, you know, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it's, that's the way they book those shows, but they're not expecting all their audience to watch each little show. And then they give you some bigger ones until they finally culminate with the the big show and you get your, your main event, you get your title matches, you get your guy who wins the super juniors, you get your guy who wins the G1 and gets the briefcase whole thing. That's how those kind of things play out. WWE goes well. That works for them, so uh, we'll put it on one show, or or we'll do it. We'll do it over two weeks, and we'll make that guy go for the title. Yeah, well, and additionally and- too, they, the thing that they don't get is that slow burn. What you're talking about with the round robin, it will culminate in a finals match that'll be 45 minutes to 60 minutes, and two guys will tear the tear the roof off. AJ and Seth will be lucky to get 20 minutes. Right. And they're not going to have that match. They're not going to have that 90-star match or whatever you want to say. And not, That's why and, it doesn't and, work. And and not only that, the, the payoff of the tournament, you get that payoff, and then you get a slow burn to the next step, which is the guy going for the title. Right, yeah. So, like, when, when you win the G1, you get the title match at Wrestle Kingdom. There's months and months to build the story between, like – when Okada wins the G1, or or like oh, last year, perfect example, Tanahashi wins the G1. He's not facing Omega until January of the mm-hmm. next year. Yep. There's so much time for the slow burn and to build the story. And is he really going to face Omega? Because Omega may have to defend three more times before Wrestle Kingdom. But in this scenario, it's it's like a compressed version of nonsense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a compressed version of nonsense. That's the perfect way to say it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But let me ask you this, because I asked uh, Electric City Saint yesterday, on well, two days ago, whenever the hell it was. He's not doing anything, obviously, with the booking. Can you see him doing something drastic? I asked Bobby that, and Bobby's response was, no, I just see them, you know, treading water, staying afloat, whatever, for a few months until fall comes around and they move the fucks. Do you think he's going to do something about this, or is he just going to keep phoning it in? I think that they are going to phone it in. And a couple years ago, we heard uh, the game, uh, the Paul, uh, you know, talk about how we have our couple weeks a year. Uh. SummerSlam's still right around the corner. And that's one of those weekends where they think they're going to make money by accident. Like the Royal Rumble, right. yep. they make it anyway. WrestleMania, they make it anyway. SummerSlam, we make it anyway. So we could tread water, still have our big summer event, SummerSlam. After SummerSlam, I'm going to assume big changes are coming. Hmm. Okay. Just because there's got to be a TV exec at Fox keeping up with what's going on saying, really, dude? Mm -hmm. And then maybe, you know, maybe VKM is sitting there saying, listen, pal. Wait till after SummerSlam. We got time, pal. You know, let's not shoot all our eggs. 
And honestly, given where they're headed right now, I don't think here here this is the honest to God's truth. I don't think there's anything they can do within a week or two now to really pop that rating anyway. Why not ride it out? Why mm-hmm. not ride it out and 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 let all this garbage play out and get to that point where you can reset it? it it's honestly I'm not saying I know this to be the strategy, but right now, even though even though you might see record low ratings, he might say, you know what? I'll give you your record low ratings now, but I'm going to give you that shot in the arm in October when we go on Fox. And here's the thing. And AJ said something in, in, his, in that promo, in that contract signing, which absolutely, it drove me crazy. And listen, I get it. He's he's caught in a promo. They're, they're probably telling him to say shit like this. But he, he made a reference to the Raw viewers not knowing about him because he was on SmackDown. All right, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that everyone else knows. That 1.8 million that watched SmackDown was the same 1.8 million that was still watching you cut that promo yes. at the end of Raw. Yes. It's the same people. Yes. It's nobody different. It's they Don't tell me when you're on the same network two days after each other and you just crossed over for three months Three months. It's not just the shakeup that made it a crossover. They've crossed over those promotions since the fucking Royal Rumble. You're gonna then you're gonna go on TV and tell me, well, the raw audience is gonna get a glimpse of AJ Styles. <laughs> okay, it's, bro. It's so right, stupid. So I'm sorry, the extra hundred thousand. Okay, they see you now, bro. Come on. Yeah, I'm pretty like, sure the, the viewers of Raw probably saw AJ <laughs> on a pay per view at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Jesus Christ! Some of the some of the shit that comes out of these guys' mouths is just like I, I know somebody probably told them to say it, so I'll give. Like I know Roman Reigns didn't want to say suckering succotash, so I'm figuring that AJ Styles probably is. I, I I'll put it to you this way: I met AJ a couple of times. I know he's smart enough to know that that's a bullshit statement. The fact that he's saying it though, and I'm not putting it all on AJ. I'm putting it on the the whole. It's the whole thing. It's just stupid. Nobody, I understand, I understand they want to play to eight-year-olds on Raw. I get it. But at the same time, and I I, I want to talk about this later when we talk about the AEW stuff with Cody. Aren't you better off at this point saying, fuck the casuals. Let's book to the wrestling fans. Let's keep the wrestling fans happy. And they'll create such a buzz that other people will watch. I, can, I have that I have that question for AEW as well. What why are you trying to alienate your fan base to pull in people that may or may not watch anyway? It's kind of a weird question, man, because I always thought, you know, <laughs> when we were saying they they won't sink below two and a half because that's the wrestling fan base. They're going to watch anyway. They have you anyway. Right, exactly. Well, now we're down to 2.1. Do we're down to 1.8. So even the wrestling base is dropping off. It's, so so lo- logic would dictate then if the, if, the, if the viewership is going down, wouldn't the merch sales be going down? Wouldn't the ticket sales be going down? Well, they are. It, the attendance is going down. Right. And it's uh, it, to me, it's natural. So what you're doing is you're alienate, alienating your fan base. You're... you're you're shrinking your own fan base. And don't – I'm going to rant for a second here. Please, I'm so sick of hearing this garbage about people watch TV differently. They're blah, 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 blah. I've been listening to this crap for five years. Shut up. You sound stupid, okay? You sound stupid. And here's why. A billion – this is what this is what they're, they're, they're guesstimating. Watched um, – uh, what's it called? Game of Thrones the other night, Sunday night. A billion people. And I understand. Out of that billion, or and this is worldwide, I get it. And I'm sure a lot of them illegally streamed it and everything else. But a billion people watched it, okay? A billion people. Let, let's, let's say they're wrong. We'll call it 500 million. <laughs> wanted to watch that show, okay? okay? Yeah. And they found a way to watch it. Well, Raw is sitting there on the USA Network every week. And I would venture to say the majority of people have cable. And if they don't have cable, they have Hulu or they have, uh, uh, you know, um, 
what's that? Sling TV, which you can still watch Raw on because sure. they have yeah. USA. Yeah. Or they have uh, uh, PlayStation View, right. which you can still watch Raw on. They have a way to watch this show. And they are deciding not to watch it. And don't don't use regular TV as the barometer. Use live sports as the barometer. Live sports is pulling in big ratings right now. There's a reason why ESPN paid the UFC all the money they paid them. There's a reason why they brought boxing back to regular TV. There's a reason why everybody's trying to get football on their network. There's a reason why TNT has the NBA. They TBS has MLB. Everybody's showing soccer and and uh, car racing. Live sports is it's it's people watch it. it. It's called live sports because they watch it live. Everybody's granted the the TV show. They're DVRing it. They're watching it a week later. They DVR the whole season and binge watch it. They wait till it hits the Netflix and they be, binge watch these TV shows. For a regular TV show, I agree with you. For pro wrestling, to me, it falls into that same category as live sports. People are watching that stuff live. The NFL Monday Night Rating on ESPN is higher now than it was when they were on ABC and they were competing with Vince. The rating is higher on ESPN now than it was then, and his rating is way down. What does that tell you? I think it's... I see your point. I'm not disagreeing with it, but I think it's appointment TV, whether it's live sports or season three of, of the last Game of Thrones season or episode three. It's appointment TV. It's must see. You got to see it now. And WWE's lost it, man. Well, do you watch Game of Thrones? Yes. Are you like a, a junkie? Have you been like on it the whole time? Yep. Okay. So I, I maybe I saw like, one or two of the first two episodes a couple years ago. I never really stuck with it or got into it. I, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't tell you other than Jon Snow and White Walker. I got nothing. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm not, honestly, I'm not disparaging it. I got, I got some heat from some people cause I posted on Facebook the other day that everybody's talking about game of Thrones and end game. And I just want to, I'm waiting for power season six to start. That's just me. I was just being a dick. Like I was just trying to rile people up anyway. But well, you pretty much worked. you pretty much got the top baby face and the top heel faction right there. <laughs> so there you go. You're good. Right. And the only honestly, the only reason why I came up with those two is because Shab talks about it on his podcast, and I have no idea what he's talking about. Okay. But, but anyway, uh, and Johnny Walker, they came out with those uh, the the White Walker, um, Johnny Walker White Walker. Mm. They had these custom bottles that you freeze. And when you freeze them, these like blue things light up, and it was a pretty cool thing they did um, this winter leading into the season. So I, I, when I heard the White Walkers, I was like, oh, I see where they're going now. You know, I, I know right, right. Going, but now I know. And for some reason, the Jon Snow things always stuck in my head. I don't know why. But anyway, other than and, and the fact that uh, what's his name, Aquaman was on on the show. Right. Yeah. He was he was uh, tremendous on there. What was his name? Kylo? No, I was gonna say Kylo Ren. That was fucking Star Wars. Yeah, what close that, though. What, Call, Call Drago. Was it? Call Drago. Okay. All right. Badass, anyway. bro. Badass. I, 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 I'll <laughs> tell you, there will be some day that I will binge watch the entire. Yeah, you'll do it Game eventually. I will. Yep. I will. It, it'll, it'll happen. I'm just like, I never got into it, so it's like, well, you know, why, why try to? I, I'm never gonna make it through now. So. Yeah, you're <laughs> not gonna catch up now. Let, let it end. Let it calm down. When I see spoilers, I have no idea what anybody's talking about. And by the time I watch it, I'm not going to remember, remember. anyway. Yep. So it's perfect. You know? <laughs> yep. But anyway, a lot of people want to see want to see this show. They're invested in this show. Mm-hmm. And honestly, a lot of people are not invested in what the WWE is doing. But um, let's move on here. And let's get into something maybe wrestling fans can invest in. Hmm. The, the speculation seems to be over. Uh, he's broken out of jail. Yes. He's broken out of his chains. The shackles are off. Mm-hmm. He's back. John Moxley. There's no Ambrose. There's no shield. Nobody's holding him back. We don't know where he's going. We know where he's been, but we don't know where he's going. Um, there's so many possibilities. Uh, excitement level. Also... I thought pretty cool way 
to reintroduce John Moxley the character. Thought it was awesome. Thought it was awesome. And the thing of it is, too, I discovered this the night he put it out. It was like I don't know, two or three in the morning when I discovered it. The next morning, it had already a million. When I woke up, it had a million views on his video yeah. on Twitter. That's, I saw that's it interest, man. Many people, many people. Uh, I have a any, question about that though. NEW shared it. Did they? Good, cool. Uh, what makes I'm wondering, you know, uh, summertime's big business for NEW. The stadium shows. Mm, yeah, that's when they do the um, big ones, right? Great. Uh, but I, <clears throat> as much as I hope, listen, I hope they sign him. I hope they, I get to see John Moxley wrestle for NEW. But my hopes and dreams are much bigger for him. I would like to see him do similar to Cody, like a list. Remember Cody's list? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see him maybe do two rounds of impact tapings and then scoot. You know, hit hit CZW, hit the entire East Coast, NEW, you know, step in <laughs> ROH for a set of tapings and then then eventually end up in AEW. Okay, course. so all right, so let's just let's just if 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 that's the case, let's just pick a promotion and pick a name. Impact, it's got to be Sammy Callahan. Right? Absolutely. Yep. If you go if he goes to ROH right now, mm-hmm. I mean, you, a couple of names could come up. Brisk, Jay Briscoe. Jay would be awesome. Yes. Lethal. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean. Hell, Bully would be cool. Bu- I'd bully take bully and, Amber, uh, bully and Mox. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Does Bully have the pull to get him there, at least in a, in a short-term thing? Mm-hmm. Possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what kind of splash would it be for... Now this is pipe dream type stuff, okay? Or pipe, maybe even a pipe bomb. Ooh, what what if AEW opened on TNT in October with John Moxley and CM Punk? That would be insane. Right. On top of Jericho and Omega at the top, you know, and Cody. Oh my god! Do you, what do you think the rating would be for the second episode? <laughs> <laughs> Probably more than one point eight million. Paul would be doing a lot of steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Assuming that's who Cody was talking about, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, though. The the production of that video he put out, dude, that was well done. That looked like a friggin' movie trailer. Mm. So my question is, who the hell did that? Is he already signed with AEW? Is he? Like, I, who could listen, afford to do that? I don't know. Maybe he I, could I, do it, but, I mean, well, it looked good. No, it, it that, honestly... What you just said popped in my head. And given what they've been doing, you think maybe he has a conversation with, you know, sits down at a table with Tony Khan and the Bucks and Jericho and Omega and and, and Cody, and they say, you know, let's shoot some promo stuff Mm -hmm. that looks so legit. But then you spend the summer working the indies. And we don't even tease the fact that you might come here. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's a surprise. Maybe he, he could show up at the second show, the third show, the first TV show. You, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe they get to that point and they show similar kind of vignettes to tease you that he's going to be on the first episode. I like it. Your point is well taken, though. That was not, you know, you know, some 18-year-old, 20-year-old in film school you know, right. trying to get his name out there. Right. That was a legit produced video. Yeah. With actors and and, and everything. I, I saw this. You know how you go. I, I, for some reason, I decided to, you know. And if you guys disagree with us, put it in the comments. <laughs> or if you agree with us, put it in the comments. Down anyway, in the comments. Down in the comments, baby. <laughs> it worked once, right? It, it can work again. <laughs> We're still trying. <laughs> trying to recreate the magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if we keep mentioning Triple H enough, we'll butt her enough in the universe that, <laughs> that they'll comment again. Because God forbid, you know, they got to protect Triple H because he needs it, right? He really needs it because oh, yeah. he cares. Because he cares what we say anyway. I mean, let's <laughs> right. Be right. Any, you got to defend them to us, and you're going to change our minds by doing it. I mean, and if you think you can, put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Thames is at work right now crying. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Anyway, um, I, I decided to read the comments under 
the actual video that Moxley put up on his, on his Twitter. I went down. It was a lot of gifts, and they were kind of funny. And there was a lot of stuff, and I'm scrolling through, and a lot of it was positive. And I finally got to one. Ah, okay. Look at how professional that was. Vince never let a guy leave like that and did T-shirts and, like, going away. He'll be back by Royal Rumble, bro. Mm. And then we scroll down a little bit more. Did you see how he's breaking out of jail, bro? Yeah, we all saw that. We all get it. We get the reference. And there was a big dog. He was getting away from the big dog, too. You know what he meant with that one, right? It was Roman Reigns. <laughs> and if you're listening and you disagree, put it in the comments. But anyway, <laughs> um, in all fairness to the, the gentleman, who I, I don't know, or, 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 or lady who uh, made that comment about the big dog, I didn't think about that watching it. Uh, I still think it's a stretch. But did you... <laughs> Uh, did that, did, 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 it, did you seeing that make you think that, or do you think maybe he's onto something? I actually heard Bully Ray say it and he kind of said it tongue in cheek, but he said it, you know what I mean? Well, Bully said it. Yeah. Mm. Uh huh. That's interesting. Yes. Very interesting. And I, I, on that, on that note, he, he, I'm not going to claim this for myself, but but I'm going to drop phrase him. I'm going to paraphrase what he said. But he said something like uh, he was trying to explain the Dean Ambrose, the equity, I think is the word he used, that Vince put into the name and the character of Dean Ambrose. Mm. He he finds it hard to believe that Vince would ever repackage him and actually change his name at this point because he's like an ex-champ. He was in the Shield. He cannot see Vince doing that. And I, I tend to agree with that. I, well, I agree with that part of it. I was talking the big dog part specifically. The part about him going back, I, I think, is total horseshit. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, and we, I mean, we've been, we, we, I mean, I think we've all been pretty consistent on, you know, the SOS YouTube channel. We all thought that this was legit. He was leaving. Um, we didn't, we didn't play into the whole, it's a work, um, right? I mean, I thought we were all pretty consistent believing that from the beginning that this was it. For Ambrose, I agree. It's different than what they have ever done, but I also think they thought they could talk him. It, it was something, you know, to go back to the the the, the documentary on Viceland. Huh. There was something that um, Pritchard said on that documentary about the screw job, saying that we never thought Vince would do it because we all assumed Vince would talk Brett into dropping the title to Sean. So that's why it was such a shock to all of us that it actually happened. Is this the same kind of scenario where they just thought that Hunter or, or Roman possibly, Mm -hmm. or even Seth or Vince himself would talk Dean into staying. Yeah. So they didn't want to, but at the same time, let's face it. They buried him for two months straight heading into WrestleMania. Yeah. I mean, he took, he took the brunt of the beating. He, you know, he was the riot squad on the guy side. Pretty much. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. For Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. I mean, to what end? To what end? Because they've done nothing with yeah, Drew it didn't since, matter, but, but yeah. It didn't matter. But at the time, we thought, I honestly, you know, in, in the pre-WrestleMania stuff we did, we thought maybe it could mean something. Could this be big for Drew? Uh, our, our greatest fears were man- imagined as always. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, let's face it, Dean, it's not like they pushed Dean to the moon. My guess is Roman and Seth got to Vince and said, we want to send Dean off this way. We want to do the shield thing in this way. And he conferred with them and let them do it. That I, I'm, I, listen, I'm not an insider. That would be my guess. That's to me, that's the most logical explanation for why they did that shield, you know, that third, fourth reboot of the shield and let them, you know, go out on top, but still bury Dean in the process yeah, it and makes then sense. He go, he Didn't goes Roman on did Roman say when he came back that night? Maybe it was the next week after, maybe. But he was he was actually that was the story in the ring, right? He was like, "Come on, one more time, brother." Right, right. You know? So yeah, I think I think you're absolutely well, right. He started with convincing Seth. You know, in the ring, he was convincing Seth, uh, "Let's get back together," and he was waiting for Seth to give the okay. 
And Seth was like, no, 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 I don't trust them. You know, the same guy. Oh, that's guy. right. Yep, yep, yep. You know, because we were killing them because it's like, it's yeah, it's the same guy who broke up the shield initially. <laughs> doesn't trust Roman Reigns. Because that, that makes perfect sense, but we'll move on. And then he agrees to let Dean, and then Dean, is he going to do it? Is he not going to do it? He's yeah. not going to do it. But then he gets attacked, and they save him, and then he is going to do it. It's the same thing. They they tried. I mean, the suspense was great, I got to tell you. I, oh, I yeah. really... I, I the whole time I never thought that Dean was gonna side with them again. Okay, <laughs> they're great. <laughs> I mean, that is his storytelling at his finest. Oh yeah, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl again. So it's, it's a love story. Yeah, kind of like Dave Gettleman being in love with uh, Daniel Jones as well. Tremendous. <laughs> How you doing with that, by and, the way? And, and listen, I heard I heard your comment about Dwayne Haskins. Okay? <laughs> if you think, listen, Dwayne Haskins might be better than Daniel Jones, but if you think he's that good, I got news for you too, bro. I would have been mad if they drafted him. All I said was the better quarterback. That's all I said. No, you, you want to know the pick I was jealous of is I wanted Montez Sweat at seventeen. Even uh, though we got Daniel Jones, I wanted Montez Sweat, and then you got him too. I couldn't. I couldn't believe they traded back into the first round and grabbed him. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And then, yo, what did, what did the Giants do? We traded back in the first round to draft a corner, and it was like 30 of them in the second round. You know, it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. It, listen, I could if I get if I go off on a rant about Dave Gettleman, we'll be here till next week. Okay, True. so good story. We'll, okay, okay, we'll save that for another day. Do you remember, remember, remember when I went off about McAdoo sitting Eli? That's yeah. how I feel about Dave Gettleman right now. All right, but anyway. Uh, okay. All right. Enough and, said. And I, I agreed with him tra- trading Odell, but the rest of it. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> at least, it, hey, listen, you're guaranteed two wins this year. All right. Uh, my own. We have no defense. I mean, anyway, Harry, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even gonna make a bet with you this year because I know we're gonna lose both games. I'm just hey, gonna. I'm just gonna put my tail between my legs. We picked up a pretty good free safety too. I don't know if you mm. saw that. Who was that? I, I can't remember. <laughs> you overpaid for him anyway. <laughs> you know the guy that's not in your secondary anymore. The guy that thinks he's the second coming to Sean Taylor. I know. Uh, well, now, come on now. <laughs> Sean's off limits. Let's be real. <laughs> Landon Collins. I know. Actually, Landon Collins is a very good player in the right system. He wasn't the right player for the Giants in their present defense. But I have a lot of respect for Landon Collins. Okay. Good enough. I'll leave it as that. All right. Um. So where are we? Moxley. Moxley. Um, we kind of did. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of speculation down the road until he's booked for a match. Um, with NEW sharing that and calling him a great talent, um, Lombardi has a lot of connections with WWE talent for many reasons. Uh, he also has connections with AEW. He has connections with Starcast. I don't know where that. I, I don't know where that's headed, but hopefully we'll see Moxley soon. Yes, in many in many places. Um, and I'd love. I, I listen. Even if he doesn't go to Impact. Somebody at Impact and somebody at AEW, if he goes, a, assuming he goes to AEW, get together, do a talent share. Wrestling fans, no matter where it is, Impact, ROH, New Japan, AEW, want to see Moxley versus Sammy Callahan. Right? Absolutely. I, I cannot think of a more perfect feud. It has to and be not, done. And not just once either. I want to see a program. Yes. I don't want to see, like, I don't want to – even if Callahan's cutting in promos on Impact, Moxley cutting promo on AEW, and they do run-ins on each show. Be great. And, they, and, and the payoffs at a big AEW pay-per-view. And, and you, know, they, you know, they throw Josh Matthews in the commentary or something to give him a little pop. Whatever. Right. This is the program we need to see. And the other one I, 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 I want to see is him and Punk. I'd love to see him and Punk too. Yep. And, but already – Already, and I don't know if you've seen any of this or you care, but the rumors are starting to buzz that WWE wants to reconcile with Punk. Yes, I did see it already. Are they are they starting to get nervous that with Moxley being out there and this AEW thing's getting very real very quickly? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Ross, uh, the whole deal, uh, which you know is not a bad mind to have at your wrestling company. Um, you got Jericho there. You hear uh, he rumors really... about uh, Revival getting $500,000 offers apiece. That's a million dollars for that tag team. If that's true, pff, yeah, he's scared. He's getting nervous. But then but then on the other side, with Punk 
having so many problems with the way they do business, does he get clued into something like they've done with Luke Harper, where they basically said, yeah, we're not going to release you because you were hurt and we're not going to honor that as time on your contract. Yeah, yeah, like, I just read that today, man. Like, that's that's a tough way to treat your talent in this day and age. Mm-hmm. It really is. You're, listen, you're not going to – first of all, I've, I've always said this with people that I work with or who work for me. Obviously, there's limits, and obviously, you can't kiss everybody's ass. I get that. But creating well, a maybe like bit, a hot waitress here and there, maybe no. <laughs> the story for another day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you guys could see our group chat with Stace, he's, <laughs> he's in love. He's like Dave Gettleman and Daniel Jones. He's in love. Oh, yeah, he's smitten. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's smitten. All right. <laughs> It's like she was walking through the senior bowl. <laughs> Look at her. Wow. God damn. Pal. Maybe she could fight the man. I got some comments about the man before you go either. either too. Oh, yeah, but anyway, yeah, sure. Let's let's uh, um, where we got off the rails here. Yeah, oh, I oh know. basically what I was saying creating some kind of, uh, you, know, you know, a healthy work environment, keeping people excited about coming to work. It is a good thing. And when you do something like that, you know, are the Usos looking sideways? Is a guy like the Miz saying, hmm, really? Mm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, doesn't it or or, there's been other people that want to leave. They can't leave. You know, the whole thing. I get it. Listen, you're under contract. You're under contract. Right. It doesn't mean you could leave. But when you start manipulating the contract like that and that's manipulation, let's be honest. Yeah, that's that's Uh, BS right there. And you've basically done next to nothing creative with this guy for a long time other than that bash brother nonsense Mm -hmm. um i mean it just it comes off as bad and i don't i'm not so sure that's the direction they want to go in right now when you have guys like cody and the bucks who want to take care of the talent in the business you know yeah i think that's one of the draws to the i mean if you look uh Look, I've been talking and we've had private conversations about a guy like Ace Austin. You know, if he sees, okay, Luke Harper, oh, okay, they screwed him into eight more months just to dick with him. Or I could go to these guys here, Cody and the Bucks, they want to take care of me. Where's a kid like that going to go? You know, that's that's the stuff he has to start thinking about. Or, or, you know, does he make a decent enough living to stay in impact and, you know, be a be a star in impact? Right. Be, be an X division champion and, and maybe more. Right. Because the one thing is, and um, I mean, maybe we should talk about Impact a little bit. The pay per view. Uh, and shout out to Brian Cage, uh, who suffered a back injury. Uh, I, it was devastating for, I'm sure for him, of course, and all his fans. He had this big moment, and we were mm-hmm. all kind of hoping for this big moment. And I don't watch Impact every week. I like the pay per views. I think they're entertaining. Uh, and when you have guys like Brian Cage, who I've been watching a long time and I want to see do well, yeah, I'm going to watch it. And he had a very good match. Um, I actually at one point thought like, this isn't the normal cage and it was probably cause he was injured. Uh, but he, he said there was no way he's stopping the match. Yeah. Yeah. There was definitely a spot in the match where you could tell, like, I think you could see them calling an audible at one point. And then, and you know, I actually thought, and I, I talked to my uh, my good buddy there from Kicking Out Two podcast, Diamond Dave, and we talked about it. Yep. We both thought that the Elgin segment, he didn't even need to attack him. You knew why Elgin was out there. Anybody who's watched wrestling, anybody who's a wrestling fan, and I'm gonna assume if at 10:45 or 10:30 or 10:20 on Sunday night, if you were watching that Impact pay per view, you are a wrestling fan, right? Yes. You know why Michael Elgin's out there. You know, he, he might shake, he might give you a little code of honor, but he's out there because you got what I want. We like that's it, it's in the eyes, it's in the actions. I didn't think he needed to go as far as attacking him. Get put that aside for a second. Cage not only, you know, does the finishes the match, but then takes the bump from Elgin. Brian Cage is a man. <laughs> like, Hell yeah, he is. And, and Elgin looked great too, by the way. He did, he actually got a nice response too when he mm-hmm. came out. I was I was surprised by that. 
you think Don Callis had any uh, had any uh, influence on uh, bringing Elgin to Impact after the New Japan deal came out? Possibly, yeah, yeah. And, he, and, might have been, and, he might have been recruiting over there. <laughs> right, and I mean, New Japan didn't exactly do a lot with him. You know, they had him in spot, Michael Elgin, you know, ah, mm-hmm. you know, but they never really, they never really went to a next level with him. You know, they put him with Tanahashi and those quirky tag matches they do, but they never really did anything big with him on his own. So I think it packs a good landing spot for a guy like Michael Elgin. Yep. I, and I think it's good for the younger guys on the roster to have a guy like Michael Elgin there. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. So, but big for Cage. Um, the other thing in Impact that uh, I wanted to bring up to you, and we could probably tie this in with the uh, the man and it, just the double <laughs> trouble and everything else. Yep, yep. Um, the, Tessa? Yeah, well, the the knockouts division is the best women's division on the planet. Absolutely, I agree. 100%. It, it is not even close. Nope, I agree. It's not even close. Dude, how and good is she? How good she is Tessa, she, man? Tessa Blanchard, I'm going to say this right now. Say it. And if you disagree, put it in the comments, but listen clearly. Tessa Blanchard, it, 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 it's not even close, mm-hmm. is by far mm-hmm. the best women's wrestler on the planet. On the planet. Mm-hmm. Period. Period. End of story. No debate. You can't debate it. She's the best women's wrestler on the planet. Yep. She can wrestle men. She can wrestle women. She, she, has, a, she has the look. She's 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 grown up in the business, uh-huh. the whole thing. Te- Tessa, how the WWE? I don't know. Oh, on somebody like Tessa Blanchard, when they're trying to give you this women's revolution, is beyond me. And I know, and I know, guys like White are going to be out there. Oh, she's tough to deal with, because oh, you know, you know. <laughs> Listen, I met Tessa once when when her and her and Ricochet were a thing. They came to NEW. Tessa had a match. Ricochet had a match with Flip. We talked to him after the show. You know, it was it, it was it was nothing special. It was cordial. Like I mean, they're not gonna be like, "Oh, you're AC," because they don't know the fuck I am. You know what I mean? It's not like when I see Flip or Taven or people I know. It's like I get a hug and the whole deal, and we talk about life and everything else. But they they were cool. But Tessa, I'm watching Tessa, and I'm like, she is too good to be here. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the she was in the ring with didn't match up you you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like she was she, her talent so far exceeded who she was in in the ring with i wish she was wrestling a guy i wish she was wrestling flip or something you know what i mean because mm-hmm. the she's match that good tremendous. Yep. she's that good yep. and she and she's physically able to do it because she's in phenomenal shape if you want to talk about a woman's wrestler being the man it's Tessa Blanchard. Yeah, absolutely. And the TV show too. I don't know if you got that impression just by watching the, you know, the hype video before their match on Sunday. But she's playing a great heel. I mean, yes. I would argue she's one of the best heels on the show. You, you know, know, we're gonna. It's oh God, sorry. great. She's great. We, you know, we're gonna get into the Cody thing, and he brought up the match at All In, the women's match. Yes, being the best of what women. Tessa Blanchard won that match. Yes. Yep. Tessa Blanchard stole that match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is not this is not anything new. She's been doing this on Impact, and she's doing it again in the best women's division. You know, a couple years ago, before um, you know, he had AEW and this this tag, a bunch of tag teams have now left Ring of Honor New Japan. You know, we used to give Ring of Honor a lot of credit for having the best tag team division, and it's their tag team division still good. It's not what it was because you don't have the Bucks, you, you know, and you have SEU, you know, it's kind of been split up now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I actually think AEW is building a fantastic tag team division and they're signing a lot of tag teams who mainstream fans don't know yet, like private parties, shout out Mark Quinn. Um, I was stoked when I saw them got signed. That was, I, I never expected it. That was tremendous. And it, you guys are for a treat with private party. But anyway, um, the knockouts division is so good. When you watch what they're doing in the knockouts division, and then you go back and watch what they're doing with WWE with the women's division. It, it, again, I I feel like when I was sitting at NEW saying Tess is too good for this, she's too good for that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll give you one caveat though: Charlotte and Ronda. If you bring Tessa to WWE, 
you have Charlotte and Ronda, you have a couple years of programming there. Oh, absolutely. The best of all, Bailey, Sasha, Becky, and I love Alexa Bliss, but her too. Not on her, not on Tessa's level. I'm sorry, they're not. And I, the the specific match with um with uh help me out here, Gail. Yeah, Gail Kim. Sorry, you know me. I always forget names. The specific match with Gail Kim. Uh, watching the highlights headed in, watching the the build up, um, I thought it was great. I thought the match was great. Tessa wins. Gail did the job for her. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even mind the break into Cabe Fabe and Tessa kind of. It was almost like you remember when The Rock beat Austin at 19, and he kind of leaned over him and was whispering in his ear. And you watch it now, and you're like, you yeah. know, he's thinking Austin. It yeah. wasn't obviously that wasn't as obvious as you know Tessa having tears in her eyes, hugging Gail Kim. Right. But it was almost like, okay, we had the match, we told the story, but now. Thank you for being Gail Kim. Thank you for doing this for me. And now have your little spotlight. I thought it was cool, man. I thought it was cool too. Yeah. And she came back for that too. She came out of retirement, quote unquote, for that. So yeah, she came back and did what she well, needed to do. That's it. That's why. <laughs> and she wants to do something for somebody who's good. And mm-hmm. Impact has a has a, a budding star in Tessa Blanchard. And I got to say, given the the direction of the women's divisions and AEW and WWE when Tessa's available, I don't know what her contractual status is. Yeah. I don't know either. I mean, it would, I would guess she's on her way to making a pretty penny because if I'm leading either of those companies, yep. I'm opening up the checkbook for Tessa Blanchard. Yep. It's going to be a, she's going to have a little bidding war, I think. All right. And uh, before we get on to Cody, I'm yeah. thinking that'll we'll close out with that. Okay. Uh, the main event, the uh, the uh, what you call it there, the uh, the tag match between Lucha Brothers and LAX. Mm-hmm. There were spots in this match. The, the Lucha Brothers are are they they're clinically insane, dude. They and are LAX insane. Is pretty far, not that far it's off. It's true. Either. It's true, man. And again, like we we've been complaining about tag teams in in WWE. LAX. I was really unfamiliar with that LAX. Until I started yeah. watching Impact, you know, five six Same. weeks ago, they're they're another awesome team that's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think the Lucha Brothers did, did you know did the job for LAX as they're probably I'm I'm guessing they're done with Impact now, headed you know back to AAA and maybe some indie shows, but mostly for AEW. I you know who knows what all contractual stuff. I know that AEW wants. The talent to keep working to the TV show starts so they don't get rusty in the whole deal. Uh, but boy, yeah, how could you not be looking forward to Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks at uh, at Double or Nothing? Oh yeah, and I saw that they added the AAA title belts to the match too. Yes. Now. Uh, yeah, they they brought that up on one of the Being the Elite shows. I think Matt. Jackson had brought that up, so I thought that would that would happen. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know if he brought it up on the show or was a. Yeah, I can't remember where I saw. It. I saw I, him I, saying it, but I can't remember where. It might have been a clip from in the ring or at a promo or something. Um, I think that makes sense. And speaking of ratings, I think that's a good sign for AEW that that match. Which let's face it, this was going into the match being aired. Everybody knew. It was Young Bucks for Lucha Brothers, and Young Bucks won the titles for the AAA, and it did a huge rating in Mexico. Yeah. Yes. 5.4 million viewers. That's pretty huge. <laughs> Internationally, that says a lot for AEW. Mm-hmm. You know, we, you and I have gone back and forth watching a lot of stuff on YouTube, and we're like, boy, you know, they're not getting the views on YouTube that even Impact's getting. I, maybe we're overthinking it. Maybe we're misreading it. Uh, maybe after Double or Nothing airs, maybe once they get on TV, that all changes. Yep. yep um, maybe. But I was I was actually a little bit nervous because I'm like, boy, if they're not reaching an audience, who's gonna watch? But then they sell the arena in five minutes, so it's like it, it was it, it, that part of it's all very confusing. Um, but I, I, I so far they have a pretty good card. Uh, built up and man, Lucha Brothers just Young Bucks tag. That's tag team wrestling right there. Yes, sir. And it, I was yep. thinking this watching, even watching the Briscoes, 
you know, <laughs> four of four of the best tag teams in the world right now. If you got the Briscoes, you have the Young Bucks, you have the Usos, and you have the Lucha Brothers. There's one common denominator there. They're, they're all brothers. <laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's almost like they have a chem- it's a weird kind of chemistry because they grew up together. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, listen, there's other tag teams that are great where they're not related, but you know, it seems like the best tag teams, and this is where I think the WWE loses people with these tag teams. They just throw them together. You know, oh, we're pick two guys, and here you go, you're a tag team. Some guys make it work, some guys don't, but. It just seems like the, these guys who have wrestled together for years and years and years, they have like this dynamic with each other, and it plays into having a really good tag team matches. It, it's just something lost on wrestling. When you watch really good tag team matches, mm-hmm. yeah, it's fun to watch. It's it's really fun to watch. Um, let's get into the Cody promo, the uh, road to double or nothing. Uh, as it's now known, Cody's opponent is Dustin Rhodes, who has, you know, uh, retired the gold dust uh, gimmick here and has uh, changed the face paint. And it's a uh, it's a family affair here. Uh, the 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 older, much older brother, Dustin versus Cody. Uh, and Cody cuts an interesting promo on many levels. Uh, I'm going to defer to you here. What do you think overall? And and and, and just let's gra- start grabbing some points and going to it because there was a lot. There was and a it, lot in this. Yeah, in four minutes. You could probably talk for four hours about it. <laughs> I just I like that you know it was kind of a follow up to Dustin's, but it he's kind of taking it generation versus generation now. They're representing both generations. I think it's interesting, but there were so many things that he said, man. I love, and I have to ask you this because he specifically said when The Rock was rhyming and raising, mm-hmm. <clears throat> was it really better than the promo that Punk cut? When he said that, I thought of you right away because, of course, <laughs> it's Punk well, and Rock. Well, first of all, he's it, it, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. It will never be better than The Rock. I just but... wanted you to get that on record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, it, anybody who's listened to me already knows what I thought about that. <laughs> I thought, though, that it was interesting he found a way to bring Punk's name up, though. Yes. Maybe I'm reading, again, we could read a lot into everything he said here. Mm-hmm. Um, he could be working us. We all know, anybody who knows, except for, you know, the WWE marks out there, the the, the fanboys who think, you know, Cody's some big dummy. Cody Rhodes is very intelligent. Oh, by so, the way, by, by by the way, they announced Dustin. He cuts this promo, and I saw a comment somewhere, probably on Twitter. Oh, wow. Cody versus Dustin. Yeah, that's going to put asses in seats. Yo, dipshits. It sold out in four minutes. <laughs> the seats, the asses are already in They're the already seats. There. They're already there. <laughs> okay. They're already there. Plus, if you didn't watch All In, Cody booked himself as a mid-carder. Even though I think it was crazy, but you know, I, I it's not like Cody said the main attraction is me versus Dustin. Right. There's fucking Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega, mm-hmm. and like we just talked about, the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers, and a whole host of other matches. Yep. Those three for me, I'm in. I mean, if I wasn't in, that would have got me in just those three matches right there. But the the same guy who probably tweeted that is probably out there going. There's never any stories in wrestling. <laughs> How about a fucking story that writes itself? Yep. Yep. I like stories that write themselves because they're believable. Cody versus Dustin. How's that not believable? Then they throw it's, two great promos on YouTube you to remember, keep the story going. I mean, you got you got to remember. It's not like Cody and Dustin were playing in the sandbox together. No. Does they? You know, Cody was with Dustin's out wrestling. Cody's a baby; he's, he's a child. They, you know, you know, there's a lot of separation there. Who, you, who, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say this too. I'll I'll get some general stames in on this show because we had a conversation about this. He and I off air, and he said, you know, he's pretty sure too. Like from Dustin's perspective, 
Dusty was a young man when he was a baby. Mm-hmm. You know, and they have, I think, separate moms. So I'm sure by the time Cody came along, his experience as a kid was probably a lot, a hell of a lot different than what Dustin's was. I'm guessing. You know, because there is a big age gap between the two. And it kind of from from uh, Dustin's promo, that's kind of where he was taking the story, you know, before Cody released his. Do, do you have a brother? Yes. You do, right? Yep. You have a younger brother. Older. Older. You have an older brother. Oh, so you're the younger brother. I'll say, your brother's jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. But... No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> you know, you know, there's... I, I mean, I, think... I am Hollywood. I mean, you know. I know. I mean, you're, you're writing scripts. I mean... You're right. <laughs> I actually, I actually heard Magic Melvin Dassey on the air this week. Where did I hear that? Ken Reedy. Oh, that's right. I heard Ken, it too. <laughs> Ken is back. Yes. Ken is back, and he swears now. He swears <laughs> a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Ken, I love you. We're just joking. It's just funny, bro. <laughs> All nothing but love to the Ken Reedy show. It is different to hear, though. I'll say that. It is. It is. It's very different without Dave on it, too. Yes. I'll yes. say that. Yep. But shout out to Dave is doing his uh as I brought up earlier is kicking out it too. And shout out to Ken Reedy for coming back with Rocky and uh they're they're kind of doing something different. So if you've been a fan of them, just feel free to listen. We're having a little fun with it. Uh especially since Ferrara obviously was the first caller. I mean, of course, why would a Ferrara be the first Great. caller? It's but amazing. anyway, I, I we got to give Ferrara credit for this. Without without Ferrara, we would not know that Joe White was a scumbag. And we wouldn't know that you worked in Hollywood. So, I mean, he's, true. he added something to our whole process over these five years. Absolutely. He added a lot. 100%. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I am an older brother. And growing up, although we were both, we were all treated well in the whole thing and, the, you know, everything else. But I always had this, like... That baby brother, they mm-hmm. like him more. You know what I mean? And he probably, you know, if you talk to my brother, they're probably like, oh, yeah, older brother, he could do anything he All wants. the favorite, the and, first. There, you know. and, and listen, there's probably a lot of truth to both sides of it, right? right? First of all, I'm an Italian. And anybody who knows Italian families knows if you are the oldest Italian son, at the end of the day, you could commit murder <laughs> and you could do nothing wrong. So they may yell and scream or whatever, but they are still going to love me because I'm the oldest Italian son. Right. And you know, I, listen, it's well known in Italian culture. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, there were times where I was like, oh, a baby and a little guy, blah, 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 blah. And my brother was always smaller than me and the whole thing. I, my point being is I could see where, you know, Dusty's on the road, especially in the territory days, so much – not around Dustin as he's growing up, the whole deal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then Dustin goes out and he's wrestling. And then here's Cody, the baby, the different mom, the whole thing. And Dusty's career is winding down. And he's, you know, teaching Cody about the wrestling business and, and everything else. You know, in, in all, in all, in, in real life, could Dusty have some animosity towards Cody? It, what Cody's saying about one of the brothers fucking up fucking up all the time was he talking about dustin mm. i mean you know he made reference that he was he got a little personal there but i also again i think cody's very intelligent um i think some of the stuff he said he could be working us maybe he brought up the punk thing just to work you yeah i don't know be. when he brought up the uh, bodybuilder put himself in no dq matches he didn't say paul or hunter by name but i mean <laughs> Who else could he have been talking about? I wonder. Maybe he was talking about Vince. Maybe he was talking about Hunter. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, really you know? quick on that, too. I liked the fact that he did it. Like, I felt like he, they did need to address it. Address? Dr- address the Hall of Fame thing. Okay. You know, because I'm pretty sure that's why he said it. It was just a, a quick little jab response back because people were clamoring for him to do that so i'm kind of glad he did it you're, you're talking about them saying the uh anybody could be a coo or ceo yeah, or yeah. whatever the hell they are yeah. uh you know yeah uh, hunter's comments you mean yes hunter which, yeah. which probably means he was talking about Hunter. probably I, you know what that's a good point i didn't consider that when i thought maybe he could be talking about vince because we all know vince probably did you know as much steroids as hogan and <laughs> <laughs> i have no i just allegedly 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 yeah. He was yes. eating those frambolone sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, 
Cody brings up the women. Uh, he, he, he he makes reference to WWE. He makes reference to uh, Omega vs. Okada. Mm-hmm. Making reference to New Japan a little bit. And get, basically saying... He, he was basically... Something I think we haven't got to yet in this whole thing. When he was talking about ending the Attitude Era. Yes. I love that he brought this up. Because... Anybody who's listened to me, I am sick of The Undertaker. And I love The Rock. And if The Rock came out and Mark out, and I know. And I Mark out if Austin came out, did a little cameo. But I am so sick and tired. Sick and tired. And you and you and 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 Bobby talked about this on the rating show of Vince going back to bringing Flair out and bringing the NWO out and bringing these people out. I am so sick and tired of every time the ratings go down. That's where we're going to go to bring the ratings back. We can't create new stars, so we're going to just suck and suck and suck and suck on our old stars to bring it out. And the eras are very different. They're, they're very Obviously, the era we're in now is light, light years from where they were in the Attitude Era. And for Cody to come out and say, we're going to bury that with this show, I like that because you're not getting back there. What they did at that time is not going to be accepted on national TV. That's, you know what? I don't agree with White when he was talking about WAW better be classy wrestling because what the fuck is classy wrestling? And you're also talking about the WWE had a live sex show in the middle of the ring, which I thought was tremendous. And honestly, if they had a live sex show in the middle of the ring on Monday night, they would have had better than a 1.83. I guarantee you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. You know what? If, if the man was getting down with the, the King Slayer in the middle of the ring, you, you, you know what I mean? Like, you would have, listen, if Rollins and Becky were having a live sex celebration and, you know, he, under the covers on Raw, there probably would have been like 4 million viewers that closed that show. Let's be honest, they mm-hmm. would have brought ratings, but it would also brought a backlash that they wouldn't have to experience 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. So those days are over. And, and the business has changed so much. I I agree with what Cody's saying. You need to kill off that era. You need to, the wrestling, the, the wrestling that is today needs to come out. The Cornets and, the, you know, the guys like that who was, oh, they disrespect the bit. Go away. Shut up. You First of all, the fans are bad, and bad enough. But when they have guys like that egging them on, go away. Go away. <laughs> Let wrestling what it is today, let it be what it is. And if people want to watch it and they want to enjoy it, they're going to. And if they don't, they won't. But when AEW comes, they may come out and do a lot of good things on Double or Nothing, but you're going to have the Jim Cornettes of the world. You're going to have may- maybe even Bully. You're going to have a bunch of guys go out there and be like, even they did it at- They did it after All In. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everybody would have went crazy if Vince booked himself to win the NWA title at All In. You know what I'm saying? It, you always get you the, the the detractors always have their voice, and those voices need to go away. And I think that's where Cody's going with all this. I think it's smart that he's doing this because all right, there's a couple things here. As a huge fan of the Attitude Era, I always go back to it because nothing has happened since. And whether that's because Vince didn't want to book anybody bigger than the company, yeah, he made John Cena into what he is. But now it seems like he reels back on guys because he doesn't want the rocket taken off. You know, th- there's there's a million examples you can point to. But, but Vince see- should have, what Cody's talking about, Vince should have did that 10 years ago and got everybody over and called it an era, but he refused to do it. Right. So now there's, a, there's this gaping hole between the Attitude Era and now... Uh, I'm thinking that Cody and the AEW is going to fill it, not Vince, because obviously <laughs> we've been bashing Vince all week here. Right. You know, well, so right, I think right, I think right, AEW so. and the guys are going to be uh, they're they're the next era, right there. It's it debuts in three weeks. Honestly, I I am not a John Cena detractor. I'm not, but I'll say this: I think as big as Cena got. And as great of a guy he is with the make of wishes and all this stuff, I think he is going to take heat for the rest of his life as a pro wrestler for causing all this, being that he didn't 
take it to the level of the rock and Austin did. And even Hogan did. Yeah, but he didn't have the But he but Jot he stayed within he he didn't he didn't bust through that glass ceiling. He went right up to that glass ceiling and stayed where Vince wanted him. Mm-hmm. Austin didn't do that. You know, when Austin didn't think it was right that he lose the title to or lose lose the feud, lose the match to Lesnar, he didn't show up to Raw. I'm not saying that's not showing up is the right thing either. I'm just saying is, you know, if when when Vince pitched the idea, you're going to lose to Bray Wyatt, I think John goes, okay, I'll lose to Bray Wyatt. I'll just beat him on the next pay-per-view. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Austin's like, whoa, hold, hold on. Let's, let's have a story here. Uh, if you want me to put Brock Lesnar over, I'll put him over, but let's do it right, Vince. Right, 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 right. You know? Yep. And I think I think The Rock has, has some of that in him. You know, let's face it. There's a lot of guys that wouldn't have done what Cena did for The Rock in, t- in, in WrestleMania 28. Oh, you, you mean to tell me this guy goes away for 10 years and I've been the biggest star you have and I got to take the L for this guy? I think that's another situation where John was like, you know what, Vince, if you think that's what's best for business, I'll take the L to The Rock. Maybe you throw me a bone next year. And, of course, he throws him the bone of, yeah, you're going to beat The Rock next year and you're going to win a title, pal. You know what I mean? And I think John Cena is probably the biggest yes man Vince ever had. It's very possible. One of them. He's up there. Up there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, Sean and Hunter and you know, Sean we could run out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'll be honest. You know, getting back to that that uh, that documentary, and you know, it, it, I've heard this on other documentaries and stories and shows and everything too. Shawn Michaels just comes off as such a little bitch. If you doesn't believe, he? If you it, now listen, his side was not said. I'll, I will say that his side was not said. But with the, the 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 hair and him complaining about an unsafe work environment and Brett talking about him crying because he knocked Vince out in front of him and he mm. didn't get one knocked out. Shawn Michaels comes off as a pussy. Let's be honest. You know what, dude, too? When I remember watching that, I still have, I can picture Shawn grabbing that title and heading up the ramp. I thought for years he had nothing to do with that. And I found out, of course, now everybody knows. He said it. Yeah, he knew. Yeah, he knew. You're a little ass-kissing bitch, Shawn Michaels. I hate to say it. You're one of my childhood heroes, but guess what? Turns out you're just a yes man. I, Terrible. I, 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 I have to say, I, I'm not going to say I'm on Brett's side because I f- personal feelings put aside, you know, Brett Hart has always been p- portrayed to us as the guy who gets the business. He came up in the business. His dad is the business. His family is the business and da, 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 and all this stuff you hear. And Brett goes out and refuses to put Sean over. I get the personal stuff. I get it. But at the end of the day, he's all about the business, right? Why didn't he put him over? And the second part is, although I like that he had the balls to do it, it just disproves this idea that Bret Hart was all about the business. When he did those interviews saying that this was horseshit and they, uh, I, I, you know what I mean? Like he, he didn't pull any punches. And I actually remember Pritchard saying on this on this uh, on this documentary, he was saying is they never thought Brett would do it. They figured they could screw Brett, and he respected the business so much that he'd never say it. And they were wrong about that too. Now get it, listen, they fucked him over, and he was pissed off. But at the same time, part of what Vince said with Brett screwed Brett, which is probably one of the most fam- one of the most famous things he's ever said. He said a lot of famous things. Uh, he's actually not wrong, though. I'll I'll put it to you this way. Are you a Mark? Are you a Brett Mark? Kind of. I can tell. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> here it comes. You're so silent. I can here tell. Here it comes. I was waiting. The Wrestling with Shadows documentary. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear them clip it, and I was surprised that they didn't clip this, but I distinctly remember on that documentary, he said the reason that he didn't want to put Sean over in Canada was because to him, it would have been the Bret Hart character going into the middle of the ring and blowing his brains out because he hated Sean so much. And the story was the Canada versus the United States and how their characters would flip flop depending on where they were. So on, from that respect, like when I saw that originally, I always had Brett's back. 
in it because, yeah, people will say he didn't do the right thing. He left and didn't put the next guy over. But in a sense, he's right because more guys need to do that. Like we talk about this all the time. CM Punk kind of got pissed off he, because he's, he, pr- he's protecting his character. He's protecting. Yeah, he's protecting everything he built. Mm. So it's like uh, from that perspective, I could see it. I mean, especially if it's like this is a major guy. This is a major. He carried the company for how long there? Right. Well, he gets he gets uh, he gets undue. I, I, I'll say this: I'm not the biggest. Bre- I like Brett. I, I I like I liked Brett when I was a kid. I, I'm not saying I didn't. Mm-hmm. Is he? Do I put him as one of my top ten? Probably not. But I'll say this: he gets undue grief. Oh, Brett was the champ in the worst time in the history of the WWE. Come on. Like, like, shut up. Half the people saying that were fucking two when that happened. Like, you don't even right, know. Right. Oh, do- he was the champion during the Doink era. <laughs> you know, shut up. <laughs> you know, um, I actually don't think – I think Brett gets sucked into that uh, technician, you know, yes. wrestler type. They don't realize that – Brett wrestled hard. Yeah. You, you know, uh, he there was impact in his maneuvers. Yep. There was a lot of, when he whipped someone into the turnbuckle, it looked real. Yep. You know, and I think that's lost on people who don't really watch his matches. Again, yeah, everything he did, like his knee, his knee drops, his elbows, like everything was like, it looked real. It looked like he, he had impact behind it. And I did think it was funny how he called out Sean for putting on the sharpshooter wrong. I, every time he does that, I always laugh. <laughs> I know. He's like, Sean put out the sharpshooter wrong. As you can see there, I had to fix my legs to help him out. <laughs> see, that's you, what you people can, don't like about him, but I love that shit about you, him. <laughs> you can tell that he might he might have reconciled in the ring with Sean and that ended at Raw. And might, he might be like, yeah, I'm cool with you guys. Dude, Brett hates those fuckers. Let's be honest. He's just he's just being nice right now. He right, can't yep. stand any of them. He's just letting go now. He's a proud guy. He's a proud guy. He can't stand it. And I'll I'll, I'll say this. Uh, and you know I'm not a punk fan. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean it's I mean it's documented many times over. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Well, I think maybe Punk has some of the same feelings about him having to put the rock over, and probably having to put the rock over to appease Cena. For putting the rock over the year right. before. Yep, probably. And yep. At the end of the day, I enjoy seeing the rock beat CM Punk because I'm a fucking mark for the rock, obviously. Right. <laughs> I'm the, I watch the rock's movies and love them. Even if they're bad, I think they're great because I love the rock. Yep. So, but at the same time, if I'm going to be fair, I can see why Brett, I can see why Punk would be upset. Not, I don't totally agree with it, but I can understand where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and I, here's and here's the thing: at least, at least they had characters to protect. Who has a character to protect now? Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Cody, Cody, he might be the only one. Kenny Omega, you know, guys, not in the WWE. Right. Exactly. What, exactly. What's Seth? What's Seth trying to protect? You build things up, I burn them down. Come on, John. Could you could you honestly believe how much how much the convincing do you think it took Vince to get Brock to put Seth over like that? I can't even believe he did. I can't believe Brock didn't just clothesline him and be like, fuck this. You wanna get <laughs> ratings? Yeah. Put that conversation on air. Let's hear what let's see what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And that that's why it's I I still have to think, and, and this this plays into you know the the drug testing and everything else in MMA and you know who knows it may come out that Brock failed again or the missing sample and all sort of bullshit. I have to believe when they did that they thought Brock was going to be gone for a while, but mm-hmm. then again this is the same company that had Becky tap at the Royal Rumble and True. then put her over at the end of the show so. You just never know. You, you know never what I mean? Know. Yep. But it's it's very it's it that that whole part of it's very puzzling. Um I I I I we'll end it on this. Aside from double or nothing in the next month, is there anything in pro wrestling that excites you? No. I think it's a problem, man. I think it's a problem for the business as a whole. I'm with you. No. Yeah, I'm still going to be watching Impact, but now that the NWA thing has gone, ROH isn't quite ready for their 
right. you know, roller coaster loop that they do, you know, like you right. mentioned. Yeah, we're we're on the, uh, you know, we 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 we're down at the bottom part right now. Yep, yep. We're, we came down the big hill, and now we're coming. yep. I mean, I guess I'll I'll, I'll watch, you know. The super ju- super juniors because you know flips there uh, marty's there bandito's there um you know you got will osprey yeah uh who i'm not the biggest fan of i think he's a little too much with the acrobatics myself but yeah he's a little um, overkill yeah i can yeah, see that uh, which which is you know part of the reason why i like the flip bully stuff was they gave you another side to they gave you kind of like a badass side yes. to flip. Yep. Like I'll take a fucking kendo stick, I'll take a chair, you know, I'll wrestle a hardcore match. I'm not just a flippity floppity flippity flu, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think with Osprey, he's he's like the the poster child for flippity floppity flippity flu, you know? Yep. Um I think I Flip think, needed that. Flip needed that. I agree. That he, absolutely. That did so much for him in my opinion. Yep. Because now he doesn't come off as just the flippity floppity flu guy. In, 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 even in the, the the tag match in the Crockett Cup with the uh, with the CMLL guys, yeah, you know there was there was a uh, granted there was the high spots in that match, but there was a lot of stiff mm-hmm. moves in that match as well, and I, I think you need that. Uh, Ricochet did that on the indie scene. Uh, I think maybe he needs more of it in WWE too. You don't want to get too much of an be too much of an acrobat, right? Right. Yep. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where that all goes. Uh, double or nothing, and then uh, we'll see where the uh, we'll see where the summer takes us. I am actually going to Money in the Bank. Oh, really? And I'm only going because it was free, and I'm going with a lot of friends, so we'll make it fun anyway. And I'll probably have a bottle of vodka before I go into the show, so I probably will not remember most of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just being honest. So I am going. So I will. Will I tell you I'm excited about it? No. I like going to live wrestling shows. It's always a little bit more fun when you're there live anyway. Um, I don't you don't know. get to hear Michael Cole, though. Does oh, that bum you out? No? Yeah, I'm, bu- I'm so bummed. Yeah. And, and Renee Young. Oh, God. I wish I could hear Renee. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you, you know, I'm very interested because in Connecticut, we're kind of very borderline – philly type wrestling fan new york city type wrestling fan mm-hmm. where it can get ugly quick mm-hmm. my biggest interest in going into this show is does the crowd turn on this show with the ratings dropping mm-hmm. with all the bad story with everything being so negative do we get like roman reigns royal rumble 2000 what was that 16 right. yeah yeah i think dude it, ugh, could, it could get it could get ugly it could Oh, oh, that was, I'll have a, I'll have a whole live show about how ugly a guy as soon as I get home. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If I'm coherent, I'm not driving. So, oh, you won't be coherent. <laughs> no, I won't be. We're going to be in Hartford all day. Hopefully we'll be alive to come home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Make sure you yeah stay alive. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in it. We'll, we will stay in the safe areas. If there's any of those left in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get out of here. All we right, did man. enough covered the moxley we covered the cody we covered the ratings we talked about a lot of things thank you for listening uh anything you want to discuss with us put it in the comments down in the comments i'm daddy cool ac for hollywood edwards soldiers of shoot we out baby so shoot, so shoot.